Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Digital Classroom. Today it's all about drones. Did you buy that new drone and are you frustrated that your images look like a staccato music instrument going like do 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 dum? Do you want that silky smooth appearance of your video? Well, this episode is going to give you all the insights and the solution. So join us for today's episode of Digital Classroom. We all love drones. I love drones to take multi-shots, panoramic shots. It's awesome. But I also love to do it with video. But there's one thing that a lot of people struggle with when they buy the new drone and they go flying and they watch their first recording. And the first thing they see is that it isn't silky smooth. It is a little bit like a stuttering or a judder. And you want that silky smooth appearance, right? So what's going on? What's going wrong? Well, actually, it's pretty simple. There are a few things you have to realize when you fly a drone or when you do video. Now, when we do photography, there's this triangle, ISO, shutter speed, and of course, aperture. And those go together, but that's for still images. Now, when we switch to video, there's another part that's really important, and that's called frames per second. Now, when we do video for, for example, the cinema, we use 24 frames a second. In essence, it's 23.976, but that's for you nerds out there. Now, when we do video for, let's say, 4K normal use, you can use 30 frames per second, 25 frames per second if you live in, for example, Europe. You can do 60 frames a second, 50 frames a second. You can use different frames a second. But in essence, there are always four options, 24, 25, 30, 60, and 50. So what does that mean? Well, when you look at a second, I'm going to show you that in a graph now in the image, you will see that if we take 25 frames a second, that means that every second is divided by 25 frames. Okay, so you see that now in the graph. So first, we have to figure out, of course, that we have 25 frames in each second. Now we're going to fly our drone. And our drone works exactly the same as any other camera. We are filming or taking photographs with ISO, shutter speed, and with the newer drones or the high-end drones, also aperture. So how does this work? Why is the judder in your image? Well, that's actually pretty simple. Look at the graph above. I've now inserted a very fast shutter speed, let's say one thousandth of a second. What you will see is that those 25 frames a second are mostly empty. And there's only one little spike of information, which is actually, well, your recorded video. So you can imagine when you watch something like this, you will see that the video is shown, next frame, next frame, and next frame. For the very simple reason, the shutter speed is just way too high. Now, when we lower that shutter speed to, let's say, 1 25th of a second, look at the graph. Now you will see that the whole frame is actually filled with information, or in other words, with video. Now, when you take a picture, you don't want 1 25th of a second for the very simple reason. You will get motion blur. But when you do video, it's very important that you try to keep that shutter speed as low as possible. Because when you shoot 25 frames a second, let's say at 1 25th of a second, the whole frame is filled with information with video. And now you get a silky smooth appearance in your video. So you might wonder, okay, Frank, so I have this beautiful DJI Mavic Pro 2 and I want to fly with it, but how can I set it up? Uh, you can change your aperture, of course, but when you're in a very, very bright situation, even with the aperture on the highest setting, you won't get that 1 25th of a second. So what do you need? Well, you probably already know ND filters for photo cameras, right? Where you can literally stop a waterfall and get this silky smooth water. Well, you have exactly the same stuff for your drone. When we look at my drone, you can actually see that on the front I have a filter. This is an ND filter. Now, there are many brands out there, but the brand that we actually use is Freewell. 
And this is the set I'm using on my drone, the 4K set. And you have several different options. For example, you have partly cloudy days, reducing glare. You have normal sunny day, reducing glare. Bright sunny days, reducing glare. And of course, very bright sunny days, reducing glare. So what is that reducing glare? Well, very simple. You need a coating on your filter to make sure that your images get the maximum contrast. You can do a little bit of dehazing, of course, in Lightroom, but it's better if you do it in the filter. The other thing that's actually more important. When I look at this kit, I have an ND8, 16, 32 and 64. That means how many stops light does it take away? Well, in all honesty, in the Netherlands, we often fly with ND8s or ND16s because we don't have a lot of sun. But when you're flying in California or situations where there's a lot of light, I actually know a lot of guys that actually shoot with ND64s. When we do that over here, the ISO will just go up a lot, unless of course we shoot in a very, very sunny day. So how do you connect it? Well, the connecting at first is a little bit tricky. Let's take a look. It's actually a very simple solution. You just twist the original filter off and you twist the new filter on. Now, at first it's a little bit terrifying, of course, because especially the first time it's a little bit tight. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. One of the most important things you have to figure out is where to put the filter, which orientation. Now, when you look at these filters, there's actually a little line on the bottom, so it's easy to align. But when you look at the little knobs on the filter, you can actually see that there are four knobs. Three are more rounded and one is a little bit more stretched. So make sure that you check that when you put the filters on. And when you do that, it's a very simple solution. Just click it on and now your drone is ready for silky smooth performance. And you might wonder, Frank, is this important for all video? Yes, it is, because it's the same technique. 25 frames a second, you have to fill that up with as much image information as you can. So also for our DJI Osmo Pocket, we also have a kit from Freewell. And this one is even more interesting. This is a 4K filter set and it has cloudy days, partly cloudy days, normal sunny days, only reducing glare, proudly, oh, sorry, partly cloudy days with, well, you know, with glare protection, what not more. So these kits, without any doubt, are highly recommended. Now, when you're a landscape photographer and you use drones, there's one kit that I would also highly recommend, also from Freewell. And this is the landscape series. Now, this is a graduated filter. So that means that if you shoot a landscape, the top part will be slightly darker than the bottom part. And well, this works great for those landscapes. In all honesty, I shoot mostly when I shoot landscapes, panoramic shots. And then this is a little bit more tricky and I don't use this for those kinds of shots. But when I take single shots for a landscape, this really is easy because now the bright sky will get darker and the bottom part will just get the normal light amount. And that saves you a lot of trouble later on in Lightroom and Photoshop. And let's be honest, why fake it when you can create it, right? If you can use a filter to do it, use the filters. It's a lot easier. So I hope this explains why your drone shots look a little bit, well, juddery in comparison to those professional drone shots. Just use filters. Awesome, and it works great. Thank you so very much for watching, guys. If you like what we do, please subscribe to our channel, leave comments below, smash that like button because we really like that. But most of all, tell other people about it. If you want more behind the scenes videos, photo critiques and whatnot more, join our Patreon on www.patreon.com slash Frank See you next time. Bye, guys.